Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm going to do a little ministry update, and then uh, I'm going to try to stay, I'm praying to stay on target. This is a prompt to video, just kind of throwing it together real quick, because I do need to get a ministry update out there. But, oh, shaking a little bit. Um, I, I've never been really good with confrontation, brothers and sisters in Christ, never have. And... When it comes to the lost world, people who just flat out hate the King James Bible, they're not Bible believers, it's easy to tell them, hey, you're wrong, but I've always had a hard time confronting brethren, you know, face-to-face -face confrontation, and uh, I don't want to get, into, this is the, the second half of the video, like I said, it's just thrown together real quick, but there's times where I've have a hard time confronting brethren face-to-face. -face. It's, you know, I start getting the shakes. You know, that confrontation, have to confront somebody knowing that it could easily go sideways. It, you're, you're doing it with love. You're trying to preach truth to somebody. And you're trying to correct them with love, a brother in Christ, sister in Christ. And it could easily go sideways and you can lose a brother in Christ, fellowship with the brother in Christ. By trying to preach truth to them. By trying to show true love. You know, True love for the lost world is preaching the truth to them. The true plan of salvation. True love for the brothers and sisters in Christ is preaching truth to them and holding them accountable to the truth. That's true love for brothers and sisters in Christ. But before we get into that, um, there's a brother and sister in Christ that I was talking to in um, another country. Let's see. Belgium. I, I know it started with the B, but it's been a while. Uh, I was Skyping a uh, brother and sister in Christ in Belgium um, the update to the ministry is this. My Skype channel is locked out. I'm locked out of it. Okay. Um, I had an old email. And I'm reading it right here. I got the monitor. You don't see it on the screen, but I have the monitor right here. Uh, like I said, I kind of put this impromptu video together. Um, Microsoft, back when I first, it might even before I joined the military, I got a email at hotmail.com. And now Outlook bought out a Hotmail a long time ago. Hotmail is just, very few people even remember what Hotmail is. What is Hotmail? Um, it's so old. But it's my first email address that I had, and I've used it all these years. I've used it for all my bills. Um, I use it for uh, when you buy stuff on Amazon, uh, when you need an email address, I give them that email. It's, it's my world email address, okay? I've had it when I was lost. And I'm just using it for bills right now. But I forgot that uh, Skype, I had it linked up to that email account. But in the last two, last like two weeks, I've been locked out of that email. And anytime I fill out the information, I don't remember all the information. I'm sorry. I already talked about my memory. I, I am so blessed when God lets me memorize scripture up here. It's a blessing. And putting it down here and living it is an even bigger blessing. Okay. But I don't know all the information, so I'm trying to put in the information. This is what I got back from the Microsoft account team. We recently received a request to recover your Microsoft account, hotmail.com. Um, unfortunately, our automated system has determined that the information you provided was not sufficient for us to validate your account ownership. So basically, I'm just locked out. And I looked on there to see if I could send them an email, if I could talk to somebody. Like sometimes they've got programs online where you can text someone online live saying, here's my situation. I don't know why I was locked out. The, the email works just fine. I mean, the password works fine, everything. But they, for some reason, that Hotmail account, they've had me switch my passwords in the last six months. I've had to switch my passwords like three or four times. Put in a new password, put in a new password. It's like, what's going on? Their new security or whatever. Anyway, the update is this. My um, uh, Skype account is linked to that Hotmail account. And when I go to log into Skype, it keeps coming back with, I need to validate my account. It won't let me in Skype anymore. So my brother and sister Christ out there that I've been talking to on Skype, just know that I'm not ignoring you. Okay, I'm not ignoring you. It's just, I'm going to have to start opening up a whole new Skype account. Okay, um, with a new email. So that's what I'm going to end up doing. So those that have been Skyping me, um, if you sent me emails, uh, I'll try to look at the email and I'll try to get you uh, 
um, the new Skype channel. But if anything, just email me if you can. I'm sorry, I just I'm having problems with emails. Uh, if you can, just email me, and I will get you the new account and everything, so we can get back to talking again. Because I miss my brother and sister in Christ in Belgium, talking with them and everything, letting them hearing about what's going on in Belgium, and they're the brother and sister in Christ that was out there witnessing and reading the King James Bible um, to the people in the park and getting people interested in God's Word, interested in the real Jesus Christ, so they can lead people away. It's predominantly Catholicism in Belgium. And they're trying to lead people to the real Jesus Christ. And I still pray for them, and I pray everything's going good for them. But um, that's the update. I really need to get that out more than anything, so we'll get that out first. All right. Second, I almost don't, don't know if I want to talk about it, but someone linked a video saying... Can you believe what JT said about you and what he did? And I looked and it's like, um, he came out with a video, um, it says what a leech ministry looks like. And here's the thing, if he disagrees with me, he disagrees with me. If I did a Bible study that he disagrees with, he can do his own Bible study showing the scripture saying, hey, I disagree with that brother in Christ. This is what the scriptures have to say. Okay. But this is the part that gets me. Okay, and I, I'll get into it. But the picture to the video shows me holding up gospel tracks. One is Brother JT at Wine Press. It's his gospel track. Okay, here's me holding up gospel tracks, and what he does is he puts a clown nose on my nose and clown hair on my hair. Okay. Now, this is a brother in Christ that used to say, I love you, brother, I'm here for you, brother, I'm praying for you, brother, I'm keep up the good work, brother, and supporting me in ministry. All right? And if you disagree with me, okay, you disagree with me. Make a Bible study. I always say, don't be personal, don't use feelings and opinions, don't use pride and ego and arrogance and start going against the scriptures, doing things the world's way. Okay. Before we get into that, Ephesians 5. Turn to Ephesians 5. If you've got your King James Bibles, turn to Ephesians 5. It's talking about the changed life. This is a whole chapter that's talking about the changed life. There's the world's way and there's God's way. The Bible way. King James Bible. Okay. There's God's way and there's the world's way. The Bible says, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and uh, perfect will of God. I hope I didn't mess that up too much. All right. We're not, love not the world, neither things in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. We're not supposed to be doing things the world's way. Okay. And what's one of the things that's the world's way? Verse 1. Be therefore followers of God as dear children and walk in love. Like I said, this is supposed to be a brother in Christ that once said he loved me as a brother in Christ. And now he's kicked me to the curb like I'm nothing. And we'll talk about that in just a second. It just really, just to let you guys know what's really heartbreaking for me and what's really irritating. I know it happens, but it's irritating. And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness and or covetousness. That's what I've been attacking a lot lately. There's a lot of covetousness, and we're going to talk about that too. Let, let it not be once named among you as become a saints, neither filthiness nor foolish jesting. Or foolish talking, nor jesting. See, this is what the world does, and I want to point this out. You guys always ask me. I've been accused of attacking Brother Brian personally, and I haven't. I've been accused of attacking Brother JT personally, and I haven't. You want to talk about personal? I don't know how to take a clip, a picture of that clip, okay, to show it. But you want to talk about personal? He put a clown nose on my face. And colored hair. That's personal. That's attacking people personal, personally. Okay? That's personal. 
I have not attacked Brother JT personally. I have not attacked Brother Brian personally. I've disagreed with them. And my disagreements are based off Scripture. And where I'm wrong, by all means, correct me. I have an email. He could email me. He won't. He doesn't. He could talk to me face to face. And we'll get into that. He won't. He won't do things God's way. Um, remember that study that we did? i got to go over the Scripture again. Let's see. Meekness. And... Um, I don't have this on my notes or anything, but we did that study on in pride, correct, instructing those that impose themselves. He believes I'm wrong and that I'm opposing myself, but the Bible says in meekness. Okay? In meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. Not in pride. Not in worldliness. There's the study. In pride, instructing those that oppose themselves. And it says, therefore, as 1 Corinthians 5, 8, Therefore let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither the leaven of malice or wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. All right? Sincerity and truth. But Brother JT, just from the video, it's like he's attacking me personally. But I've never attacked him personally. And Brother Jesus Christ, I keep telling you, don't attack people personally like this. This distracts you from the truth. And that's all it's meant to do is distract you. And then he uses good words and fair speeches. In the comment section, they make it out like I said that uh, if you're married, it's evil and wickedness. And if you have children, it's evil and wickedness. That's not what I said in that study. What he's talking about is my study on um, the eight commands that God... Are you ready? The eight commands that God... They're pushing, Brother Brian and Brother JT are pushing to be ready for the catch of the body of Christ. You've got to prep and you've got to get... And it's all worldliness. No, the Bible says we're supposed to be looking present tense for that blessed hope. You want to survive this world, how this world's fallen apart, and the hardships of this world? This is the solution. Jesus is the solution to all our problems. Okay? I'll read this. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27. But God hath chosen the fullest things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and the things which are not to bring to, to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. What I was talking about in that study when it came to marriage is marriage can become idolatry. And I'll, I'll read the verse for it. Paul even warned about it. Your husband and your, you get so worried about pleasing your husband over pleasing God. For the sisters in Christ out there, you get sometimes you fall into the trap for brethren out there into pleasing your wife over pleasing God, your children over pleasing God, pleasing yourself with worldliness, filthy lucre, love of money. Okay, and you know who I'm going to use as a bad example? Brother JT and Brother Brian. No, I'm going to use me as the bad example. But I want to keep reading this first. What is the solution to all our problems when it comes to what's going on in the world? What is the solution? Jesus Christ. His Word. We keep reading that no flesh of glory is present, but of Him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, salvation. That according as is written, He that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. This is the solution. And we'll get into more depth. I'm not saying you just sit here and do nothing and you don't, you know, I've already talked about this. So I'll say this real quick. I've talked about prepping as far as you do a year's worth. That's what it used to be. You'd reap, you would sow in due season. Every year you'd reap and sow and you would start jarring and canning stuff to make it through 
that season. Every year you store up a year's worth of food, then the next year, a year's worth of food. I'm not against that, okay? I'm just against people pushing and acting like we're going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble and then turning around and acting like I'm a pre-time of Jacob's trouble, catch away the body of Christ believer. Then why are you pushing, we're going, you're acting like we're going through the time of Jacob's trouble? Could there hard times happen? Yes, but who gets us through those hard times? God does. I didn't bring any food in here. Not food. I know the Bible says man shall not live by bread alone. We already have food. I'm not against that. But if you put your faith in the food and stocking your food up. I said this before. I had a, a brother, a brother or sister in Christ had a testimony where they had a fire and their food pantry, it burned up all their food. Gone, just like that. Is your faith in that food or is your faith in the Lord to get you through hard times? No, we're not supposed to just sit here on our butts and do nothing. Okay, we're supposed to work. If a man doesn't work, neither shall he eat. I understand that. But our faith and trust is in Jesus Christ. And we're not supposed to be distracted by the world. I'm getting ahead of myself. But they make it out like I said that's wrong. And that's not what I was saying. I said they could become, they could become idolatry. When you put anything in this world above the, your walk with the Lord, above His Word, and like I said, I'm going to use this man right here as a bad example. This man right here. But turn to 1 Corinthians 7. This is Paul talking. 1 Corinthians 7. I didn't mention this verse in the study. But 1 Corinthians 7. I, um, verse 32. But I would have you without carefulness... He that is unmarried cares for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. That's truth. But he that is married cares for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. Paul talks about it. When you get married, there's a cost to getting married. You can easily be distracted and fall into the trap, and I'm going to use me as a bad example, of trying to please your wife over pleasing God. Okay, let's keep reading. There's a difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord, that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. But she that marrieth careth for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. I can compromise because I want to make my husband happy. I can compromise because I want my wife happy. You know that saying, happy wife, happy life. i got to make my wife happy. And if that includes compromising the word of God, okay. What happens? You start coveting things in your life, and it could be a wife, it could be a husband, it could be children, it could be off-grid living, it could be on-grid living. I'm, I know I said off-grid living because Brother Brian pushes off-grid living, but I live by the coast. I've always dreamed about living by the coast. My dream life is having a little cabin. I don't have a cabin, but a little cabin on the coast. You can walk down to the beach and everything. I live kind of close to the coast. I'm kind of living the dream, my dream a little bit, the life that I want to live. But is this life more important than serving the Lord? If I had to give all this up, like I said before, to go do a house church somewhere else, would I do it? I pray I would. Right now I can say yes because I haven't had to face that challenge yet. But when that challenge comes, will I be able to have the courage to say, This stuff doesn't matter. Lead me, Lord. Take me where you want me to go, where you can use me. Okay, that was the whole point in that study, and they took words that I used and twisted them. Just utterly twisted them, and I can't get the one program working where, uh, the OBS studio, where I can do and show you the video and talk about it, what we normally do. So I'm just, like I said, just kind of threw this together. And this I speak to your own prophet, that not that I may cast a snare upon you. In other words, marriage is an evil. Marriage in itself is an evil. But that which is comely, and that ye may attend upon the Lord without distraction. But marriage can be a distraction. Having children can be a distraction. Having a lot of possessions and worldliness can become a distraction. Not necessarily that it's a sin, but it can become a distraction. Okay. But if any man think that he behaveth himself uncomely towards his virgin, if, he, if she be past the flower of her age, and need so require, let him do what he will. He sinneth not, let them marry. There's nothing wrong with getting married. Married is not a bad thing. Children are a good thing. I lost my daughter a year ago. She died. 
I miss my daughter. She's lost. I wish I could have had more time to lead her to Christ. Uh, I tried, but like Jesus said, uh, a prophet is without honor except in his own country. I'm her father trying to live right, and she's getting drowned in by the world, and she loved what the world had to say more than what her father had to say. But the point is, is I didn't say that be, having children is a sin. Yes, you're supposed to raise your children in the admonition of the Lord. Yes, reading to them is good, okay? Uh, reading the Bible to them, singing, teaching them hymns, teaching them the Bible. Uh, okay, when my daughter was very young, um, I was lost. But there's a lot of things that I remember when she came over. And when I got saved, I wish I'd have got saved sooner when she was younger and more open to Bible studies and Bible, I mean, like listening to Bible stories and everything. But when I first got saved, I tried to introduce her to the Bible. And we'd watch things online as far as, um, like if we were doing Noah, we'd look up what people thought the ark looked like. Or we'd look up animals that, were, that went on the ark and everything. We looked up storms, raging storms out to sea and everything to see how the water reacts and everything and how scary it is. And um, we'd take things from the Bible and we'd show it, like the walls of Jericho, okay, what you know, artist renditions sometimes. And I'd let her see some stuff and we'd look up stuff online as far as pictures and we'd talk about, as we're reading the Bible, and talk about the Bible and the stories of the Old Testament and everything. I'm not against that, Brothers Christ. I've never said that it's evil and wicked. They're making me out to be like an evil and wicked man because I hate marriage and I hate children. That's not it at all. I don't know where they're getting that. But the biggest thing, more than anything, Brothers Jesus Christ, is this. My problem right now, my ultimate problem, and we're going to get to a, a, a comment someone made saying that I hate Brother Brian. I don't hate Brother Brian. My frustration right now, Brothers Jesus Christ, is this. There's two men that called me brother. They said they loved me as a brother in Christ. They would pat me on the back. Good work. Keep up the good work. And they supported me. And when I say something that they don't agree with, they kick me to the curb like I am nothing to them. I'm nothing to them. They didn't come to me as a brother in Christ and meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. Brotherly love. They didn't come to me and talk to me. They just kicked me to the curb. They started backbiting and whispering. They started bearing false witness. They started spreading rumors. They started lying about me. They started a campaign to start stabbing me in the back, attacking me personally. Clown nose. Clown. That's personal, and that's prideful. That's arrogance. Especially, I mean, I'm not saying it's okay to do it against someone who's obviously lost. I'm saying he's doing it to someone he once called a brother. I would talk to Brother JT and Skype him a lot. And we talk, not a lot, but we talk. Okay? He was there for me during some hard times. I was there for him during some hard times. And they, the part that, that really eats at me is how they can turn on you like that. One minute you're a brother that they love, the next minute you're the enemy, and they hate you. That's hate and disdain to do that, put that in those... Brother JT has no love or respect for me whatsoever. It's hate. Hate and ego and pride. Okay. What was it? Uh, another comment that I like, so I wish I could show you this on here, it'd be a lot easier, but another comment that I'm dealing with, oops, this isn't working. Sorry for Victoria, she's getting up and walking around. Um, another comment is, it says, Philip Newton, like under the Are You Ready 8 point checklist, Soldier for Jesus Christ, because that's what he's supposedly debunking. But he's going off a lot of feelings and opinions, and there's a lot of pride in how he talks. It's not about, okay, he's a brother in Christ that's, long, that, that's fallen. He's a brother in Christ that's gone the wrong way. That's not his attitude. His attitude is very prideful. And like I said, it's not respect or love for a brother in Christ. It's just being shown in that video. Okay? It's hate and pride and ego, bitterness. Okay? But this thing, I got a comment from uh, someone that says, Philip Newton, you better repent. You're speaking lies and sowing discord among brethren. I'm speaking truth. 
If I'm wrong in an area where I'm speaking truth, remember what I've always said, brother, says Christ, if you're gonna, if you have a problem with what someone teaches, or you're trying to call out a wolf in sheep's clothing, you do it through a Bible study. And you show what absolute truth is, where, where the Bible is right, and you show where they're wrong. You don't make it personal. You don't start acting like the world and, and, and you know, transfiguring their face and composing everything. That's drama. That's worldliness. Okay? You don't do that. You just show from the scriptures where God is right, His word is right, and that person is wrong. Okay? Truth divides, brothers and sisters of Christ. When you have brethren that start falling away and they refuse to come back to the standing point, it's going to divide. Even Brian would say that. And I hopefully, if they haven't gotten so prideful and ego-driven, even Brother JT would say that. Okay? Truth divides. And when you see someone, because they believe I'm going the wrong direction, when you see someone that's falling away and they refuse to come back to a standing point, it's going to divide. Okay? I'm not trying to sow discord among the brethren. I'm not. I'm trying to stand for the truth. And I'm holding brethren accountable that are start, they're starting to turn away from the truth. Turn away from their stance that they once took. But, real quick, so maybe I didn't come over that. But the thing that irritates me about Brother Brian and Brother JT the most is how they can turn on someone like that. Brother Brian used to complain and whine. Brother Brian, it's, it's born again, if you don't know, born again bar, uh, barbarian. It used to be King James Video Ministries. That was a good ministry. Now it's born again barbarian. And they used to get mad when they had so-called brethren turn on them in a heartbeat and kick them to the curb like they were nothing and treat them like they're nothing. One minute they love them, next minute they treat them like they're nothing. And what irritates me, Brother Jesus Christ, is I'm looking at this, I'm like, but you're acting the same way. You're acting like the lost world. You're doing things the lost world's way and how you're treating the brethren and how you're going about doing things. Clown knows. But this is Christ. Those who are vehemently defending Brother Brian, he's, he's, he's my lowercase g God. Are you not seeing this? He, even if you believe he's 100% right where we differ in the scriptures and I'm 100% wrong, are you still not seeing how he's going about doing things? Is that right? Does that set right with you? He's not once come and talked to me one-on-one. -on -one. Paul, Paul went and confronted Peter and withstood him to his face and talked to him. Okay? It doesn't say he rebuked him in front of everybody and everything. It just said he withstood him to his face. He, in other words, it's something that was so important. I have to talk to him face to face. I have to confront this brother in Christ whom I love face to face. Not talked about him behind their back. And this might come as a surprise, but a surprise, but when you make a video naming brethren's names, and you haven't gone and talked to them to their face, it's the same thing as talking about them behind their back. Because there's no guarantee that someone's going to see that. I didn't see that video when it first came out. I might have never seen the video. It's still talking about someone behind their back. Peter Ruppin used to say that. Don't say anything about someone behind their back that you won't or haven't say, said to their face. And be careful about that, because a lot of times they'll sit there with their pride and ego and say, oh, I'd say it to their face. How come you haven't gone and addressed that brother in Christ and talked with them? How come you haven't gone and tried to gain your brother back by getting them back on the right path? I've always tried to push this, that when you correct a brother in Christ, it's not to destroy them. It's to build them back up and get them back on the right path. Have you done that? Well, I don't have to do that. Exactly. That's the thing that frustrates me. One minute I'm someone and, I, and they care about me and they love me and the next minute I'm nobody. I'm a nobody. They kick me to the curb like I'm nothing. And they've done it to other brethren. And, I'm, and I know this might sound bad but I'm warning you brothers and guys, it could happen to you. You think it couldn't? Look at a man who supported King James Video Ministries for, for 10 years. Almost. Five, six, seven, eight years? Sorry, eight years? 
Oh, Brother Brian would never treat me that way. He would never just kick me to the curb like I'm nothing. If he disagreed with me, he'd come talk to me. He has brotherly love. He talks about brotherly love. He'd come talk to me. But he didn't. He kicked me to the curb like I was nothing. Right? Like I said, I had to apologize for some things, the, how I treated Brother Brian, because I went about doing things the wrong way. I had to apologize. I did an apology video. I have apologized about some of the ways I have went about doing things which were not the Bible way. I got pull, doing things the world's way. Brother Brian has never apologized once. He's never wrong. But I don't want to go into that. I don't want to get into gossip. I don't want to get into backbiting whispering. The thing that irritates me the most about Brother JT and Brother brother Brian, okay, I haven't turned my back on him. If I have, I wouldn't call him brother. I treat them like they're lost, like they're treating me. I still pray for them every day. I pray for them. Okay. But if someone says discord among the brethren, no, I'm not. I've offered to talk to them and Skype them and try to get our differences patched up through the scriptures. Do a Bible study with them and say, okay, this is where we're disagreeing. This is where we're having problems. Let's talk about the scriptures and let's fellowship. Let's find out where I'm wrong. Let's find out where the Bible's right. I've said this before. Not where they're wrong. Let's, I'll go into it with, let's find out where the Bible's right, and let's find out where I'm wrong. And I pray they go into it with the same attitude. I've offered that to them, and they've refused. They just kicked me to the curb like I'm nothing. I'm nothing. Brothers of Christ, they treat me like that. You don't think they're going to treat you like that? If you kick their sin, their lowercase g gods, which is what I was talking about in that video, Covetousness, which is idolatry. You can covet things, they become idolatry. Anytime you let anything come between you and the Lord, it becomes idolatry. And if you kick someone's idols, like I said, I've, I've been a coward sometimes, a lot. Because if you kick someone's idols, you risk them kicking back. You risk them turning on you. You risk losing fellowship. But you still have to make that risk sometimes, and you still have to confront that person. Okay. But this person says, I'm sowing seeds, brother, and two of the six things that God hates, seven that are an abomination to him. See Proverbs 6, uh, 16 through 19. You better repent of the Lord will judge you sharply. I'm newly saved and repenting of my sins, for you say such lies like the one sin where we lose our salvation. You will throw us all, us off the rails. Evidently, he didn't listen. He was too busy trying to defend or fight or whatever. He wasn't listening. In that study, I said that if you're not dispensational, maybe he needs to do some studies on dispensational teaching. If you're not dispensational, there are, th there are sins unto death in the Bible. In the Old Testament, in the time of Jacob's trouble, in the uh, kingdom of heaven, the day of the Lord. The thousand year reign of Jesus Christ. It's all works. There are sins unto death in the Bible. Absolutely. And if you're not uh, um, dispensational, you'll make a mess of the scriptures. And I told in that video that we will be doing another study. And this is how I responded to him. I said, Proverbs 18, 13. He that answereth the matter before he heareth it is folly and shame unto him. And it is. And I, I linked, what is the unpardonable sin, dot, 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 for today. There are unpardonable sins in the Bible, but is there any for today? And I do a study sh showing that there are no unpardonable sins for today. God can forgive anything. God can cleanse us from all unrighteousness today. Anyone can get saved today. And when you do get saved, you can't lose your salvation today. Eh? It's not yours. But you're sealed into the day of redemption. When you get saved, you are sealed and that's what I taught in that video. But he sits there and he makes it out like I said, they're just creating so many lies. And it shouldn't be that frustrating, but I had brethren that gave this study a thumbs up that turned around and took away their thumbs up and gave it a thumbs down. And then I got a lot of people giving it a thumbs down because you had people that weren't listening and paying attention. They took certain words, then they changed them and said, oh, he's against marriage. He thinks marriage is evil and having children is evil. That's not what I said. I said it can become idolatry when you put that stuff before the Lord. The Lord comes 
first when you get saved. His word comes first in your life. Oh, and I said I'd use me as a bad example when it came to pleasing your wife over pleasing God. My ex-wife was a drunkard and a drug addict. And she wanted to hide it. She didn't want anybody to see it. She wanted everybody to think that she was a good person. Self, uh, going about to establish her own righteousness. She wanted people to think that she's a good person. Okay. Now, I caved in. Brother says Christ, I caved in. And I know I'm kind of a little over the place. Please understand this is just a prompt-to video. I didn't make notes to help keep me on track. I caved in. And I, bought, I went to, to Fred Myers with her, and I bought her a six-pack of beer, maybe two six-packs. I think it was one or two six-packs of beer. And I stood with her in line and paid for it. And she got drunk in the garage. Why? I just wanted her to off my back, and I wanted to please my wife over pleasing the Lord. I failed the Lord that day, and I failed my wife that day. That wasn't the only time. There was another time that she wanted some cash. Oh, I'm just going in to get, get a drink, like some, a juice or something at Rite Aid. And I, I gave her cash knowing that she was going to get cigarettes. And she ended up buying some liquor. Or not liquor. Um, wine coolers or, or beers. She bought something. And we went to the beach and she's sitting there all drunk and everything. And the, everyone that walks by, she's drunk or and act, almost acting like high, but drunk and she's running up to everybody trying to say Jesus is, is Lord and they're... and I'm sitting there trying to apologize for her and how do you lead it to tell someone about the real Jesus Christ when you got a, a woman there that's just I remember Peter Ruckman's testimony I love his testimonies he testified about a guy hitting him up and asking him he said do you go to the theaters do you drink do you smoke no 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 okay then talk and if he had said yes, he didn't want to hear anything the man had to say. Didn't want to hear about Jesus Christ either. From a hypocrite. Okay? You have a person there trying to pretend like, I'm a Christian, but they're getting all worldly high and setting a bad example for, for a brother or sister in Christ. But anyway, I failed the Lord because I, was wor I started giving in to pleasing my wife over pleasing the Lord. Brother says Christ... I did the same thing with my daughter. There's times where I compromised and caved in. I had family members attacking me, saying, you need to ease off. There's no Hollywood movies in my house. There's no te uh, TV shows. There's no video games. And of course, she was too young for alcohol, cigarettes. But if she ever got old enough that she, she, if, when she's not here, she wants to do that stuff, it's still sinful, it's still wrong. But when she comes to visit me, she has to with, go without doing that stuff. I said, hey, this stuff's not welcome here. Right? There was times where I compromised. And it, it, that letting her do some of those things got me tempted and got me into doing some of those things. One of my biggest addictions, I've said, Brother Jesus Christ, and it'll probably be with me till the day I die, is video games. I was a hardcore video game addict. That's why I get it out of my life as best I can completely. I was a big time video game addict. Right? I also got drunk in my past. When I was in the military, I got drunk several times. I don't want alcohol in my life. Okay? I, I, I am addicted to Hollywood movies, TV shows. Okay? I don't want that stuff in my life. When I compromise, it can easily fall back on me. But the point is, I'm making, Brothers of Christ, there are times where you can. Turn your back on what, what God is warning you, and God is trying to help you, and God's commanding you to do things His way. You can turn your back on that for worldly things. For marriage. For children. That was the whole point of my, that statement that I made in that study. And people are taking it out of context, saying, He hates marriage. He thinks all marriage is evil. He thinks having children are evil. I didn't say that. That's called a political campaign smear campaign is what that is. That's all that is, is a political smear campaign. If we can make him look bad, nobody will listen to him. And that way we can get him back to listening to us. But are you telling him the truth? Who cares about truth? What is truth? Pontius Pilate, what is truth? And that's how they're acting. If they can do a smear campaign... Like I said, if they disagree with me, show me through the scriptures. If you want to make comments under my videos, I didn't block them. Brother Brian can make a comment under my video. 
Brother JT can make a comment under my video showing in the scriptures where I'm wrong and where he disagrees with me. I never blocked him. Okay? But this guy right here doesn't listen, and that's what that's the fruit. I'm just saying, that's the fruit of Brother JT. This guy came out and made this comment after Brother JT made that video proving me wrong. Where at in those six commands that I was preaching and teaching, where was I wrong in preaching and teaching those six commands that God gave? Mainly what he was attacking was when I pointed out that when we look at what's going on in the world, it's supposed to strengthen things that remain. Okay, we see how wicked the world's getting, and we distance ourselves from it, and we continue to live a life of Christ. We might go through some hard times, but the world doesn't dictate how we live. This does. God's Word does. Okay? We don't look at the world to get distracted by the world. We keep our eyes on Jesus Christ, that blessed hope. The world's falling apart. We see signs that line up with script prophecies in the Scriptures. And we say Jesus Christ is coming back any day now. We're looking, present tense, for that blessed hope. Brother JT, if he's gone along with Brother Brian, has turned his back on the blessed hope. He's no longer looking for it. I'm sorry, he's turned his back on looking for it. They both still profess that it'll happen someday, but they've turned their back on present tense looking for it with the life that they're living. They're getting distracted by what's going on in the world. And I think that's the part he really got agitated on. If he disagrees with me, show me in the scriptures. Don't act like a child. Putting a clown, a, a little child, and bitterness and pride and putting a clown nose on my face. Show me in the scriptures. Okay? And don't twist my words. But this is the fruit of that video. A guy came to my channel, I believe he's saved. He came to my channel and he, he didn't listen to my words. I never said that today, present tense, there's a sin unto to death. Okay? That we can lose our salvation today in the, what's called the a time of the Gentiles. We call it the church age, but the Bible definition word for it is the day of the Gentiles. Until the day of the Gentiles be fulfilled, Jesus said. Salvation went out into the world and until the day of the Gentiles fulfilled, the catching away of the body of Christ will fulfill the day of the Gentiles. The time of Jacob's trouble is not going to start. In this dispensation, there is no salvation. And I went ahead and put it out there. It's a Proverbs 6, 16 and read the whole thing, or uh, typed out the whole thing. These six things does the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look. I'm working on that, brothers and Christ. I don't want to get prideful. I get frustrated. I get angry with the cause. Sometimes I'm angry without a cause. Okay? And, it's, and I'm realizing half the time I'm angry, I'm angry with this guy right here. My feelings and my flaws, my mistakes, my struggles with the flesh. The number one person I'm really angry with is this man right here. A proud look. I don't want a proud look. Okay? I'm trying not to. A lying tongue. Okay? Be careful. You might not be lying, but you might be, or you know, might not believe that you're lying, but you might be passing on information by gossip. What does the Bible say? The Bible says before two or three witnesses, let every word be established. If there's not two or three witnesses, don't talk about it. Okay? That'll help you when it comes to a lying tongue. Okay, when it comes to the body of Christ, if there's not two or three witnesses, now if someone, if you've heard it from the person's mouth, you can say something. But if you're listening to people gossip and you're passing on gossip as if it's absolute truth, be careful. You might, your intentions might not to be to lie, but you're passing on lies. Be very careful with that, okay? I preach truth, and like I said, I don't attack them personally. I'm just preaching where I disagree with them. Okay, according to the scriptures. A heart that deviseth, deviseth wicked imaginations. Okay, I always told you that when I first got saved, one of the things I had a hard time with is when I tried to give up video games and Hollywood movies and TV shows, things would start getting me to remember them. Okay, bad things, wicked things. I also talked about that before I was saved, I was a porn addict. Okay, it's, I'm ashamed of that. And I'm not glorifying it. You know, like some people glorify their shame, how people dress and how they act today. I'm not glorifying it. I'm ashamed of that sin. Very ashamed. Okay. 
we, I work hard to keep a clean mind. And I have to work, a lot of us, brothers and Christ, that did some very wicked things in our lost life. We work hard, and God will help us if we keep this in our head and this in our hearts and living it. It will help drown out the evil and wickedness. But it says, deviseth a wicked and, but it says, deviseth. Not that you struggle with the thoughts, but deviseth wicked imaginations. You know a good example of that? People who are doing these Hollywood movies and TV shows and video games. Getting people like me addicted to it. Wicked imagination. They're promoting all kinds of wickedness in these video games and Hollywood movies and TV shows. That would be a good example of that one. Okay? But don't think it's that God hates you because you're struggling with thoughts and you're trying to bring your thoughts into subjection as the Bible says you're supposed to. You're supposed to work on that every day to bring your thoughts under subjection. Okay, vain imagination. Okay, don't want vain imaginations. Okay. Okay, here's the next one. Feet that be swift and running to mischief. Now, I'm not saying Brother JT falls under this, but when you do a clown nose and a clown face, you're trying to provoke a response in somebody. You're attacking someone, trying to get a response from them. You ever had that sometimes where someone comes to you, they're looking for a fight? And they're doing everything they can to provoke you into a fight. And you're doing your best to say, hey, I'm not going to fight that man. I'm going to stand for absolute truth. And if Brother JT doesn't want the truth, okay. But I'm not going to fight that man. Feet that be swift in running to mischief. Okay. Feet that be swift. In other words, it always wants to run to mischief. I get this. I see this a lot in a lot of false converts. When I talk about the changed life, uh... They still love sin, they love worldliness, they defend sin, they're swift to run to mischief, to cause trouble. Okay, here's 19, a false witness that speaketh lies. Like I said, don't fall into the false witness. Before two or three witnesses, let every word be established. If there's not two or three witnesses, drop it. If the person's guilty, if the person's wrong, God will deal with them. God will deal with them. Don't fall in the trap of a false witness speak of lies, being a, a, a false witness, passing on false witness. Don't, be, don't fall into that trap. Okay. If you didn't see it and you weren't there, keep your yap shut, if I could say it right. Keep your mouth shut. That's hard for some people. Brother Brian started saying things about me where he wasn't even there. He's not an eyewitness. Brother JT says the same thing. Says things about me where he wasn't even there. I don't attack them. There's some things I disagree with them. And I have a feel, you know, I just, they're doing this. They're probably doing that. But I don't know. And it's like, I'm not going to say anything. Why? Because before two or three witnesses, let every word be established. I don't know for certain. Sometimes I hear things. And it's like, uh, if it's serious, I'd go talk to them. But they broke fellowship with me. But when I hear something about a brother in Christ, I just... Don't fall for all the drama and everything online. Just go talk to that brother or sister in Christ. Why is that so hard for the brethren today? you got a problem with me? Come talk to me. I have an email. I, I have to get a new Skype set up. I have Skype. I have email. I have Facebook Messenger. Okay? It seems like people that think I'm lost and a heretic, they'll talk to me for an hour about the Bible when they disagree with me on post-trib. I had a post-trib guy trying to convince me I was lost and wrong. Um, uh, people that attack the true plan of salvation, they're part of the easy believism. There is no repentance. There's no, you can pray, but there is no repentance according to the Bible, how the Bible defines repentance. I'll say it again. Uh, godly sor sorrow towards God, your creator, for your personal sins that you've sinned against him, understanding that that sin is sending you to hell. It's godly sorrow for your personal sins. They take that out of salvation. I got those people coming and knocking down my door wanting to talk to me, but a brother in Christ that once said, the once called me a brother in Christ, I love you, brother, keep up the good work. Uh, I, I, that I've been for, there for them in hard times. They've been there for me in hard times. They won't come talk to me. They won't come talk to me at all. This is the world we live in. The last days, brothers and sisters Christ. We're in the last days. Okay? And here's the last one. And he that soweth discord among brethren. I preach truth and say I disagree with them. 
You know what really sows discourse among the brethren? Gossip. I have not gossiped about them. I don't go around talking about them behind their back. Okay? I made Bible studies where I disagreed with them. And I already talked about this. I probably should have gone and talked to them first, mainly Brother Brian, and I made an apology video because I slipped up and mentioned his name in a video before I went and talked to him about my disagreement with him. And I was wrong. I was wrong. I even took the video down. I was wrong. I repented. You need to repent. I have repented. I took the video down and I apologized. Okay? But what truly sows discord among the brethren is gossip, backbiting and whispering, railing for railing, bearing false witness. Okay? I have not been making videos left and right about Brother Brian or Brother JT. Why? Because for the most part, I believe that unless they've changed, because I haven't been following them a lot lately, unless they've dramatically changed in the last four or five months, they predominantly believe as I believe. Where they fail and turn their back on the Word of God is when they turn their back on looking for that blessed hope. They turn their back on the, they call it the imminent return, believing in the imminent return of Jesus Christ. Looking is what the Bible says. You're supposed to be looking, present tense, for that blessed hope with the life that you're living. You're supposed to live as if Jesus Christ could come back any day now. Are you ready? That's what the Bible teaches, and they've turned their back on it. They start bringing in traditions of men and culture and worldliness. Okay, our disagreement on Christmas. But for the most part, when it comes to the major doctrines, other than that one that they've turned on, because that is, to me, a major doctrine. It goes hand in hand. If you truly believe in the uh, pre-time of Jacob's trouble catching away of the body of Christ, then you're going to be looking present tense for that blessed hope. All right. But I haven't attacked them personally, and I'm not going around talking about them behind their back. I'm not taking their words and twisting them. I'm not. Uh, we'll get to another study that I did, a uh, comment, but all I said is I prayed that I said, Amen on these passages. I need to go, it's another checklist. We could do a whole study on that checklist, Brother Sister Christ. I don't mean to do this a long video, but we can do another a study on checklist. Are you ready? And we can go through that checklist and say, Are you making sure to check that too? Make sure that you're not, you know, be, someone who does a lying tongue. Do you, so we lie sometimes. But we're offended. Sometimes we're ashamed of the truth, and we do tend to lie sometimes. I'm not acting like, I never lie, and I'm perfect. No, there's times where I've been caught lying because I'm ashamed of the truth. All right. Um, shed innocent blood. Okay, hopefully none of us are doing that. Brother Jesus Christ, you're not doing that. The heart that defies wicked imaginations. You're not part of anything that has to do with produ producing things that are wicked and, 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 and promote wicked imaginations among the world as a whole. Okay. But I said amen to these, this passage, and I pray that you don't fall under it, and I pray that I don't either. It's something to work on every day. It's not something that you just look at it once and say, okay, I'm good. You're supposed to look at it a lot, especially in these last days. Okay. And under, did Paul always name names? I had, I pray she's a sister in Christ. I had a sister in Christ that came on there, and all these came out after... Brother JT's video attacking me personally and twisting my words. All right. And like I said, if I said it wrong, then come tell me. There's times where I'll say, you know what? It does sound like I'm saying that. I've had to say that before to our brother in Christ. I said, you know what? It does sound like I'm promoting this. That, that's not what I meant. I said it wrong. That's not what I meant. And I had to, I, started, I apologize. I repent. I apologize. I've had to do that before. If you see me saying something that you say, that's not, come talk to me. It might be big enough that I have to take the video down and redo the study if I say something too bad. Uh, little mistakes, I leave on there because I'm not perfect and I'm not trying for perfection. But if I say something that's going to mislead brethren and lead them astray, let me know. Okay, I will take it down and redo a study. But what's the fruit of that, what Brother JT did? Then I've got this person coming on here saying... Uh, 1 John 2, 9 through 11. 1 John 2, 9 through 11.
The scripture is true, but she's misusing it. 1 John 2, 9 through 11. Okay, verse, let's go back to 8. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past, and the true light now shineth. He that saith he is in the light, and hateth his brother. Like I said, they keep pushing this. Why do you have so much hate for Brother Brian? I don't hate him. I have not shown hate for him. He's shown hate for me. I haven't shown hate for him. I haven't shown hate for Brother JT, but... You know, where am I defacing his, his, his figure, making him look like a clown, mocking him, making fun of him, talking about him behind his back? Where am I doing that? But they were trying to say this. She's trying to use this saying, I hate Brother Brian. Hate his brother and is in darkness even until now. I still call him a brother in Christ. Well, if I hated him, would I be calling him a brother in Christ? Would I still be praying for him? Would I still have the doors open for reconciliation? I didn't shut the doors. He did. I didn't shut the doors between me and Brother JT. Brother JT did. But I hate him so much even though the doors are still open. I hate him so much they're still allowed to make comments under my video. I hate him. I don't hate him. Maybe this sister in Christ got confused on what real hate is. I disagree with them. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is no occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whether he goeth. Amen to this. Okay, this warning is to Brother Brian and Brother JT too, as much as it is for me. Why isn't she warning Brother Brian and Brother JT the same way she's trying to warn me using this scripture? Because they're showing such hate towards me. And as we keep reading this, she kind of sounds like she has hate towards me. Why doesn't she listen to this scripture that she's quoting? Because the darkness hath blinded his eyes. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. Once again, all sin can be forgiven today. There is no unpardonable sin today. But she goes on to say, your hatred for Brian is wrong and against scripture. I don't hate Brian. You're right. If I hated Brian, it would be wrong, a brother in Christ, according to the scriptures. I disagree with him. Okay? And I've tried to confront him. He won't have it. So I had to publicly show that I disagree with him and show Bible studies where what the Bible says and where he's wrong. But I didn't hate him and I didn't attack him personally. I didn't bring up his personal life and sinful the sin that he struggles with in his personal life, the mistakes that he's made in his past. I didn't go after him personally doing a smear campaign. I just stuck with the Word of God. This is where I disagree with him. Here's absolute truth. This is where he's wrong. If you believe I'm wrong, show me in the Scriptures. Let's do a Bible study. That's always been my attitude. I've never turned anyone away. For the most part, I have to say that for the most part because I can't say never because that's, that's an absolute. For the most part, I don't turn people away. If I realize that you're not going to budge and I'm not going to budge and we've already tried talking one-on-one, -on -one, I'm not going to keep talking to you over and over and over knowing that you're not going to listen. But I'll try. And that's the key. And that's our problem we're having in the brothers in Christ. Are you trying to confront brethren and correct them in love and meekness? Trying to get them back on their, their feet so you can get that fellowship, so you can regain that fellowship back. Or are you just acting like Brother Brian and Brother JT, just kicking people to the curb like they're nothing? Just kick them to the curb, they're nothing. Brother, that hurts. I had brethren that used to say, I love you, I support your ministry, I'm praying for you. And now they act like they have so much hate for me. Just like that. Turned on me just like that. That hurts. You say, you had tears? Absolutely. Paul warned the brethren night and day with tears. Wolves and sheep's clothing coming in. Dividing the flock. The backbiting, the whispering. Railing for railing. The division. 
He warned. There was tears. Yes, I had tears when Brother Brian stabbed me in the back. Yes, I had tears when Brother JT stabbed me in the back. They don't care. I pray someday they do. Uh, they're not. I pray they're not so far gone. I still pray for them. Okay. But he says, repent, make a decision once and for all. Is your ministry about defaming Brian? It's not about defaming Brian. I have not attacked Brian personally. I've disagreed with him sometimes. And when I disagree with him, I'm not going to attack him personally. I'm not going to make it a drama fest to try to get more views. Huge drama fest. I'm just going to do a Bible study. That's how I'm going to do things. Deal with it. Okay? With this sister in Christ. I pray she's a sister in Christ. You need to understand the difference between disagreement and hate and defaming. I'm not defaming Brother Brian when I disagree with him. Defaming him is when I go and try to hold all his past sins against him, start bearing false witness, start gossiping, backbiting, that's what backbiting is, and whispering, saying things about him, holding past mistakes against him, present tense. He's defamed me. I haven't defamed him. He's showing hate towards me. I haven't shown hate towards him. Frustration. Hurt. Sorrow. Who is the ultimate man of sorrow? Jesus Christ. Right. Being, having sorrow for how I'm being treated. Uh, defaming Brian, is there a point to these studies? Yes, there is. But notice in this whole comment, she never once talked about the study itself. And the study was called, is Paul, Did Paul Always Name Names? And I proved that he didn't. That was the whole point of the study. I disagree with you. Instead of just saying, Brian's wrong, I don't want to be like that. Brother JT's wrong, I don't want to be like that. I'm not the final authority. And when you get to the point where I say, if I say they're wrong, they're wrong. You need to stay away from that man, he'll mess you up. That makes me the final authority. It's what say the scriptures. I turn it into a Bible study. I disagree with Brother Brian's where I heard that, that comment from. I disagree with them, but I've also heard that comment from other brethren. I don't know if they got it from Brother Brian or they're parroting the stuff that they've learned from other people. But the point is, I did a Bible study. Where in this Bible study am I wrong? She doesn't want to show me where I'm wrong. She knows Brother Brian's wrong, but she's still trying to defend a man that's wrong. Respect her persons. Covetousness, which is idolatry, you're coveting this man to the point where he's becoming a lowercase g god. He's wrong. Paul didn't know his name names. Okay. Brother and sister Christ, I'll say just an overview of that study again. There's times where you can name names as a good example or a bad example, and there's times where you can not name names, use them as, in general, not using names, but using the person as a, or a group of people, as a good example or bad example. Use spiritual discernment, okay? But don't get to the point where you're attacking people and belittling people. God, Paul always named names. No, he didn't. Okay, there's times where I'm a coward and I should name names, but I don't always name names. And there's times where I'm naming names out of pride and ego and bitterness and, and envy. Okay, there's times where naming, you shouldn't be naming names. Just use it in general. Like I said, use spiritual discernment. You can use people's good examples and bad examples with or without naming names. Okay? But she doesn't want to show... She doesn't agree that Brian's wrong, nor does she agree uh, and show that I'm wrong. She's just too busy trying to defend her, what I want to say, covetousness, um, uh, respect her persons. Right. Uh, see, uh, there's a point in these studies. All I see is a brother walking in darkness. All you see is a brother walking in darkness. Can you elaborate a little bit more than that? Where am I wrong according to the scriptures? Where am I doing wrong? Show me the scriptures. I pointed out where a brother in Christ is wrong. I didn't name names. And part of me is like, and this is where the, the, the bad part comes in, the pride. There's times I don't name names because I know it upsets some people because I don't name names. And that's not really a good excuse for not naming names. Okay. Uh, so once again, spiritual discernment. When you name names, make sure you're doing it with a clean heart. Okay. 
with good intentions and a clean heart. When you don't name names, make sure it's with good intentions and a clean heart. Okay, and then she says, I'm a brother that won't talk about events that are taking place in the world because he wants to stay ignorant to it. No, it isn't. See, like I said, this is inspiring from Brother JT. What he did, this is what this is, the fruit of this. Okay? I always say, when you see what's something going on in the world, you take it back and you do a Bible study. And I have. I see what's going on in the body of Christ today. Okay? The world is getting in sin and witness. Uh, a brother in Christ had me ask me if I would do a study on abortion because of recent events that happened in the world about uh, Roe versus Wade getting overturned. And I did it. There's just, I don't want to get distracted by the world and let the world pull me away from what matters, which is this word. I, you can do Bible studies saying, hey, you see this? The Lord said this was going to happen. You know what this means? We're supposed to keep our eyes on that blessed hope. That means Jesus could come back any day now. We just need to get busy living for the Lord. We need to get busy working for the Lord and the ministry of reconciliation, preaching the gospel, gospel tracting. We need to get out there. You always bring it back to how it can help the brethren keep our eyes on Jesus Christ and living for the Lord every day. But when you have brethren that look at what's going on in the world and they use that to distract you and get you to start going the way of the world, that's wrong. And I won't do that. That's, if that's what she wants, I won't do that. I don't think that's what she wants. But that's what I believe Brother Brian's doing. And Brother JT, predominantly Brother JT. They get distracted by worldliness. Okay? Like I said, we look, we, we, are, we watch and strengthen the things that remain. We don't let the world deter us and pull us away from living the life of Christ and doing the work of the Lord. The Lord expects us to grow in wisdom, amen, and to seek knowledge, amen. But the wisdom of this world, be careful what wisdom you're looking for and what knowledge you're seeking. Are you seeking this? Because that's what I'm preaching. Or are you seeking that out there? Not this, and not this right here, but the world. The world's wisdom. You like the drama. Be careful. How can you do that if you stay in your ignorance and won't help the brethren? I have helped the brethren. Where are you getting this from? See, she's already coming into this negative and hate towards me. And she's listening to somebody who's using good words and fair speeches to deceive the hearts of the simple. I am helping the brethren. I've had brethren say, thank you for this study. It's helped me. This study is like you were talking to me. I've had that come up in comments. Okay. I have helped the brethren. Maybe not you specifically, but I've helped the brethren as a whole. And I pray someday I do have a study that will help you. Right. Who aren't ready. This, like I said once again, this is how you're ready. Not, like I said, you can do all the prepping in the world and it ain't going to do squat without this. This is the ultimate prepping. This is what you're supposed to be hiding in your heart and living it. And God will take care of us. Through hard times, God will take care of us. All the prepping in the world isn't going to help you through hard times. This is. Okay. You mentioned, this, you mentioned the same scripture points in every study. That's making all your studies one continuous rant. Okay. Uh, there's times where I do. There's certain scriptures I have, especially when we talk about the Word of God, there's some scriptures I do quote a lot. Uh, that word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. When I go to talk about how this, the whole point of this study is to put whatever we're teaching into your heart and living it, why is she complaining about that? Why is she whining about that? It sounds like it's coming from JT. Through her. The fruit of his video that he did? Wow. Um... Okay. Thus making all your studies one continuous rant. So all I do is rant, brother says Christ. Evidently, that's, that's all I do is rant. 
sometimes I just I wish there was something I could do to help her, but if she's a respecter of persons and she's already made up her mind about me, there's nothing I can do to help her. Maybe you should apply all that effort to exhorting and aiding the brethren, and I have. To prepare for, oh, to prepare for tough times, I have. I've aided with this, because this is how I aid. If I had a brother in Christ come to me and say I can't afford food, I'd buy food for him. Clothes, I'd buy clothes for him, if I can't afford it. Okay, I've helped brethren with things, okay, that they can't get. I've helped brethren overseas get things that they can't get where they're at. Right? And I've always pushed that. Bibles. You want a Bible, I'll get you a Bible. Right? Prepare for tough times. There's nothing I can do physically to help you prepare for tough times. That's on you. If you actually believe that, that you're going to go through such hard times, that's on you. Every area is different. Okay, Every region is different. That's not my area of expertise. I'm only helping prepare you spiritually for what's about to happen. No matter how bad and wicked it gets out there, are you going to keep your eyes on Jesus Christ and keep living for Him no matter what? Are you going to throw your... All, uh, when we talked about a child becoming uh, an idol, uh, Isaac, I know Brother Christ did a study on Isaac, is your Isaac on the altar of sacrifice laid? Abraham's son. Is that son more important to you than me? The Lord tested him. Is that son more important than me? There's things in this world that become uh, that can become idols. It can become covetousness, which is idolatry. You can start putting things in this world before the Lord and His Word, and I'm here to try to help you, motivate you to put His Word first. But she doesn't like that. She, she doesn't want that kind of help. She just wants worldliness. I'm here to tell her and all the other brothers and sisters of Christ out there, this comes first and this is what's more important than prepping. By all means, if you want to prep some food for a year or two, go for it. But it's not going to last five years. There's no guarantee that whatever you do is going to get you through those two years. You know where the guarantees are? Here. You know where your faith is supposed to be? In the Lord to get us through those days. That's the important thing. And I see brethren get distracted and their faith isn't in the Word of God and it isn't that God will take care of us no matter how tough it gets before the end, before the catching away of the body of Christ. God will watch over us and take care of us. And His will be done. They're turning from that saying, My will be done. I can take care of myself. I can save myself during this hard time. I can do it. By all means, do all the prayer, but no, it's all worthless without Jesus Christ. What's the, any different between a prepper that's lost and a prepper that's saved if all it's about is prepping? There is no difference. What's supposed to be the difference? We have hope. God's coming back someday to take us home. God's coming back someday to take us home. Okay? See, but like I said, I don't know where this is coming from. You're not aiding the brethren. I am helping the brethren. Just because she doesn't see it all, all the help that I do behind the scenes, helping brothers and sisters in Christ out. She's, she's got a serious problem. But what's this fruit from? Brother JT's video. Bad fruit. Tough times and not asking them to pray for what you need I mean, maybe she's talking about the wood stove, but I, there's a lot of things that I need, but I just mentioned the wood stove. Okay? And yes, we're supposed to be praying for not just what I need, we're supposed to be praying for the brother as a whole. And I've always pushed that. Pray for the brother as a whole. Food and raiment, but more importantly, the Word of God. That they have food and raiment, and that they're taking God's Word and hiding their heart and living it. And if there's any way that I can be a servant to my brothers and sisters in Christ and help them, let it happen. Uh, uh, brothers of Christ, I wish there was a house church here. I wish brethren came together. A brother of Christ can say, I'm building a fence this weekend. If anybody wants to come help, I volunteer. I'll go help. Help him build a fence on his property. Sing some hymns. Talk about the Bible. Be in good company while doing work. Being in good company. Okay? I'm all for that. 
But like I said, this is all one-sided because this woman has, doesn't come and talk to me. Uh, Brother JT said all this stuff about you, and he, he kind of sounded good what he said in that video, but I can't believe that you would actually say something like that, you know, that marriage is evil and children are evil, and, and really push that. Is that really what you meant? She didn't come and talk to me. And brethren aren't coming and talking to me. They're just kicking me to the curb like I'm nothing. But anyway, you're going to end up being lonely. And you're going to come down to a point where it's just going to be you when you act like that. And you treat the brethren like that. It's just going to be you. You're going to be a very lonely person. That's what it's going to come down to. Okay? If you don't confront brethren and go talk to brethren and do it with brotherly love and in meekness, if you don't verify, trust but verify as they said, I, I was in the military, so trust but verify, okay? If they said, oh, Philip did this, Philip, come verify that. Come talk to me. I might have screwed up, and I might have to say, yes, I did that. Yes, I made that mistake. That a long time ago, I repented. Yes, I did that. Yes, I screwed up royally. Or you might find out that I'd be like, where are you getting this? That never happened. No, that's not how it happened. That's a lie. That's just gossip. Please don't listen to gossip. Right. Now they put on here, I'm very disappointed, Philip. Well, I'm very disappointed in you because you couldn't come talk to me. You couldn't come talk to me. I have an email. She could have emailed me and talked to me. I could. We could have hooked up on Skype, once I get a new account, uh, Facebook Messenger, uh, where you can video chat. I would have talked with her. She could have asked her questions. Is this true? Is that true? I'm very disappointed in her that she was deceived by that video, good words and fair speeches. I'm very disappointed, Philip, and I hope you read this and feel conviction because you're going down a bad path. But there's no specifics. How can I turn from the bad path when she's not explaining? It's all feelings and opinions and, and generic. Yeah, you're going down a bad path. What is that bad path? Oh, just, just trust me. You're going down a bad path. Yeah, but what is that bad path? You're just going down a bad path. Uh, you're causing uh, discord. Okay, how am I causing discord? By preaching truth? There's nothing I can do about that. I'm going to continue preaching truth. Am I causing discord because you, you caught me backbiting or whispering? By all means, correct me. I, I need to be corrected if I'm backbiting or whispering. Did, am I causing discord by bearing false witness? By all means, show me where I'm, I'm bearing false witness. And I'll repent. See, those are things I can fix. But just being generic and saying, oh, you're just going down a bad path, that doesn't mean anything. You're causing division. Okay, how? Because I'm standing for absolute truth? It's going to cause division in these last days. More and more brethren are going to be falling away from the truth as we get closer and closer to the catch away of the body of Christ. And we need, those of us that are still standing need to stay standing. And those that are falling, we've got to do it with love. And in meekness, so we've got to instruct them to try to get them back on their feet. And if they don't want to be back on their feet, we tried. But I'm not sowing seeds of division. The ones that are turning their back on absolute truth are sowing seeds of division. The ones that are gossiping, backbiting, and whispering. Anyway, she says I'm going down a bad path. And then there's someone on there that jumped on there so quick. It's Amanda. I, maybe I'm wrong, but Amanda's a woman's name. Someone jumped on there and said, Amen, brother. <laughs> just so quick amen brother and it's like brother and sister Christ I'm, I'm struggling in these last days um, I'm struggling with purpose in the sense that I have some brethren that encourage me praise you or praise the Lord and thank you I want to say it right sorry praise the Lord and thank you for the encouragement um, but I've, what's really discouraging to me is I've had brethren that used to call me brother and now they just attack me uh, they kick me to the curb like I'm nothing. That's the frustration, Brother Sister Christ. It's just so frustrating. They kick you to the curb like you're nothing. And you know what I believe is the uh, I believe is the root cause of this? This junk right here. Not her comment. The internet. There's so many people so comfortable with having an online Christian life. And it's so easy to get into kicking people to the curb and finding someone else. It's just there's so many fish in the sea. You've heard that statement before. And I can just kick that person to the curb. I can kick that. I don't have to deal with that person face to face. There's no true accountability online. Anybody that tells you that, they are a liar. 
And I'll call him out. If JT says that, if brother, brother JT or Brother Brian say that, or anybody says that you can have true accountability online, they are a liar. You can't. When you have to deal with people face to face, and we're going to get into a study where Paul, his heartfelt desire was face to face fellowship, and anytime he had to correct somebody, he wanted to be there in person to do it. Face to face correction, face to face fellowship. And this online life garbage, and I started falling for it. Online, it's like there's no accountability. People can act however they want to act. There's no real consequences. I mean, you lose this brother in Christ, eh, kick him to the curb, and I'll just find another. Where's the sorrow? Where's the heartfelt loss of sorrow? I lost that brother in Christ. He was a great brother in Christ, and he started going the way of the world. We got into a disagreement. I lost a brother in Christ. I had that heartfelt sorrow with Brother Brian. I had that heartfelt sorrow with Brother JT at the wine press. I had that heartfelt sorrow with other brethren down through the years that I've lost fellowship with certain brethren. I've had that heartfelt sorrow. I still pray for them. I still think about them. There was a group of brethren that they used to uh, do Bible studies with online, um, Skyping. All of them have gone their separate ways. The whole group fell apart and they all started going their separate ways. I still have that sorrow. I miss my brothers in Christ. I miss them. Okay? I'm, I, I don't want to be good. I don't want to be like this. This whole attitude here where I can say whatever I want to say, however I want to say it, I don't care who I hurt, and I can just kick people to the curb like they're nothing and treat people like they're just... I, like I said, I'm a video game addict. You treat them like they're a video game character. They're not real. They're not really that important. Just kick them to the curb like they're nothing. It's all about me, myself, and I. This is getting dangerous in these last days. I'm not against online ministries, brothers and Christ. I have one. God has blessed me with one. I'm not against online ministries. I'm just saying, I don't want this. To, this should not be your soul fellowship ministry, this internet. And I'm pointing to my computer over here. That's why I keep pushing that we desperately need to get house churches where there's face-to-face -face fellowship. It's not so easy to just kick someone to the curb. Well, I don't have to. I can just ignore them. I don't have to deal with them. I just ignore them. We live in the same town. Where part, there's only one church, not 50 million Babel buildings. There's only one, it's supposed to be one place where the church as a whole comes together in any given area. And we come together to sing hymns, to listen to the Bible being read, to listen to pre good preaching, to confess our faults one to another, to hold each other accountable, to be here to help one another physically. You need help building a fence. You need help with this. I, I, I don't have enough money for food. Okay, let's take you down to the grocery store and let's get you some food, brother. We're here to help one another. That kind of bond, brotherhood, if you want to say, brothers and sisters in Christ, when you have a life like that, it's hard to just kick someone to the curb like they're nothing. This, it's easy. This isn't what God intended. Having a life that's just, your Christian life is just solely on here. And I keep pushing that we need to be living a, Christ, a life of Christ. You need to be living it. I keep pushing in these last days, and maybe it's too late, and I'm nobody. I'm a nobody. And all I do is rant. <laughs> and this, this, this video, that's, I, I know it sounds like I'm ranting a little bit. A little bit of frustration. So I apologize for it. But, but brothers, this is Christ. That's why I keep pushing house churches. If you have a couple, even if it's just two of you, and you have the ability to come together once a week, make sure you're coming together once a week, once a month. Make sure you're there for one another, physically helping one another, holding each other accountable to the Word of God, encouraging one another. It's so important in these last days. Yes, we're going to be isolated because the world is isolating us. But don't be one of those people that purposely isolate yourself. I'm purposely doing it. I don't want to be around other people. I got my Christian life online. That's good enough. Don't be one of those people. Okay, If you have the opportunity, put together house churches. Come together. Strive together. The Bible says we're supposed to be of the same mind and the same judgment. Striving together. You know what this promotes? 
not being of the same mind. There's so many different versions of everything online. This online is just all about, you know, bickering. You got, and that's another thing. And we'll, we'll wrap it up. The other thing I hate about online is, is if you had a house church, and yes, I'm going to use his name. Brother Brian used to testify, and this is a good thing. Not, once again, oh, you just hate Brother Brian. No, I don't. He testified when he was doing his house church that, that anybody who wanted to join the house church, they would vet him. They would go meet him in public somewhere, sit down, and they would talk with him and meet him several times and talk with him. and Because they can say the right things sometimes, but they wanted to see how they were living their life and if their words held true, if they were parroting what someone else was saying or if they actually believed what they were saying. And he has some stories where uh, some people started out like, yeah, I'm one of you, I'm one of you. And it's like, okay, this guy seems like he might be a great addition to the, you know, to the fellowship and everything. And, and halfway through the conversation, the guy goes, Whew. and we're like, oh, no, he's not, he's, he's not saved. And he's, and, then, and when they tell him, okay, not, not at this time, the guy loses it and just goes crazy. The point I'm making is his testimony, it's harder for wolves in sheep's clothing when you have a house church and it's face to face, it's harder for the wolves in sheep's clothing to, and the snakes to slither their way in. It's easy for them online. It's easy for them. I have so many people say, good job, brother. I don't know if they're saved. I don't know if they have a hidden agenda. I don't know who all of them are. I don't. I'm not saying you're lost, brother, says Christ. I'm just saying you don't know. Someone could say, hey, great stuff. Look, you make a comment. Someone can say, like this guy right here. Joseph Green, amen, brother. You don't know who Joseph Green is. I shouldn't name, I didn't want to use names, but the man who commented said, amen, brother, to a woman making a comment. I pray it's a sister in Christ. Um, but I don't know the sister in Christ. I don't know these people. Are they true? Are they genuine? Or are they on here just trying to slither their way? That's another thing about having a house church versus online life, online Christian life. I'm so tired of getting stabbed in the back. I'm so tired of finding out that there's false brethren that I used to think are brothers. I'm tired of brethren falling away. I'm tired of these things. Brothers, if I just come back to what I said, I'm getting a little burnt out. I didn't mean for this study to go so long. Maybe this little venting video. Like I said, the only one person I'm mad at is this guy right here. I struggle, brother, because I do struggle. And I do make mistakes. And um, I'm not perfect. And I'm trying to live a life of Christ and I'm trying to do his work and I'm all alone up here and that doesn't justify sin that doesn't justify the mistakes that I've made okay um, brothers Christ we need to be coming together I'm not for division I'm for coming together but there's some things that you can't compromise on looking for that blessed hope is one of them we can't compromise on that and before you think I'm causing a vision with Christmas, I disagreed with Brother Brian on Christmas. I made my videos. He was for Christmas. He made his videos. I still supported King James Video Ministries when it was King James Video Ministries. I didn't kick him to the curb. I didn't cause so division. I just preached the truth that God showed me. Here's the truth. I didn't sow seeds of division. Who sowed seeds of division? Brother Brian did. He had a problem with me being against Christmas. He would claim that's not it. Yes, it is. He has a problem with the brethren as a whole being against Christmas. It's evil. It's wickedness. It's sin. But I still supported King James Video Ministries. Like I said, the major doctrines. And for the most part, he's right on. It's only in the last hmm, a year from January, so I guess it's been a year and a half now, when he turned his back on the imminent return of Jesus Christ, he turned his back on looking, present tense, for that blessed hope, he started to go downhill fast. He's no longer looking at Jesus Christ saying, if he came back today, would he be happy and proud? If, not proud. Would he be? Would he look at me and say, well done, thou good and faithful one? Or will he look at me going, look how you've been treating the brethren. Look how you've been promoting backbiting and whispering. Look how you've been doing this. Look about that. Blah, blah. Look, look how the ministry is not coming first. Look how little I can keep going on, but I don't want to go into it. I'm just saying I disagree with him because that's major doctrine. But the little things that I disagreed with him on, I disagreed with him on it, and we still got along just fine. Go ahead. 
And why, I don't know what it is, something, I guess he had a lot of people attacking him on Christmas, that when I disagree with him on Christmas, he lumped me up with the enemy. He must be one of the enemy then. What happened to, this is something we can agree to disagree on. I don't agree with that, that statement. I believe it's anti-scripture. The Bible says we're supposed to be the same mind and the same judgment, period. There is no agree to disagree. But him, on his side, we can agree to, what happened to we can agree to disagree? I don't want to go off on a rant. Please forgive me, brothers and sisters Christ. I love my brother in Christ, Brother Brian. I'm praying for him that he can drop the pride, he can drop the ego, and that he gets back to looking for that blessed hope. And I believe if he can get back to looking for that blessed hope and start reevaluating his whole walk with the Lord through the scriptures, which is why I've been putting out Bible studies lately about, you know, evaluating. Are you ready? Here's some things. Are you checking these things? Are you checking those things? When you stop looking for Jesus Christ, you stop using this as a checklist for how you're living and you get distracted by the world. And you start living according to the world. And you get distracted by sin. You get distracted by covetousness. You get distracted by things that are going on in the world. Oh yeah. I speak from experience. Okay. When you take your eyes off Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I want, my hope for you is that you keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. Okay. I don't know. Uh, 1 Corinthians. We're going to end this with 1 Corinthians 2.9. This was supposed to be just something short, but I just like I said, it was a prompt-to video, so if I said something wrong, please forgive me. I just needed to get this out mainly because I gotta let brother know that that I that I don't talk to him on on um, emails as much as I talk to him on Skype, and I've lost my Skype connection, so I need to email get your email again because sometimes I lose email, and I'm trying to learn how to archive emails. Um, so I can get you connected to a new Skype channel. Because I'm going to have to open up a whole new Skype channel. So that's the main thing for the, for the ministry update. And like I said, I'm sorry for the little bit of the rant. But I've got people who once called me brother stabbing me in the back. And brethren that, you know, like I said, they're trying to, re they're trying to start a fight. I mean, put a clown nose and everything, that's trying to start a fight. I'm sticking to the truth. Okay. If Brother JT has a problem with that video that I did, that Bible study I did, I'm here. I'm here. If he wants to come talk to me, I'm here. If he doesn't want to come talk to me, keep his mouth shut. Come talk to me. You're supposed to come talk to me first before you make that video. He didn't come talk to me. And like I said, more ranting. I could keep ranting. But the point is, is with that, Brother Scott, is there a solution to not having to come talk to you as a brother in Christ? Is they'll just say you're lost. I mean, seriously, that's how they get out of trying to do things God's way and showing brother. I don't have to show brotherly love if you're lost. So I'm just going to kick them to the curb and treat them like they're lost. Brother JT could have come and talked to me. And if I slipped up in that video and said something about him that I shouldn't have said, I'd have to apologize and do a public apology. But he, could have, he should have come and talked to me first. But he didn't. You guys keep getting on to me. Brothers is Christ, not you all, but... The ones that support me and support Brother Brian and Brother JT, that support all three of us, and probably others too, you guys keep getting on to me that I need to do my best to reconcile with them, and yet, look what they're doing. Are you on them as hard as you are on me? Uh, be on both of us. I would love to be reconciled. Okay? I still have the doors open. They slammed the door in my face, both of them. I didn't close the doors of fellowship. They did. Okay, he's got a problem with me, come talk to me. I got an email. We were connected on Skype, but I got to get a whole new Skype. That email, it's just toast. It's so old, but it's just toast. I'm tired of fighting them. I have no fights in all the new emails, but that old email. But I want to end with this, Brother Sister Christ. The whole point of this ministry is to keep your eyes on Jesus Christ and living for him every day, every day, living for Jesus Christ. And Brother Sister Christ, I do want fellowship. And it does hurt that my fellowship was small to begin with, and it got even smaller because a lowercase g God said, stay away from him, he'll mess you up. And instead of coming to me to try to say, okay, this is where I'm, I'm told you're doing this, that's wrong, I'm told you're doing that, that's wrong, is this true? And if it is true, can I show in the scriptures where that's wrong and try to get you back on your feet? The brethren aren't doing that. You've been taught and brainwashed by internet life. Just kick them to the curb. Just kick them to the curb, they're nothing. Just treat them like they're nothing. And it's, it's like all robots and political when you say, I love you, brother. Do you really love your brother in Christ when you say, I love you, brother? 
I'm not seeing it that much. I'm seeing a lot of hate. Okay. Hate and envy. Okay. And bitterness. Bitterness, hate, and envy. Okay. Come talk to me. I was doing this like I was going to say a little bit of something and my brain just lost what I was going to say. But come talk to me. I'm here. I'm not above correction. Okay. And I've said this a million times. She wanted to come talk to me, she could come talk to me. The other guy that said, oh, you're causing division, if you want to come talk to me, you can come talk to me. I'm here. I have an email address. I'll hook up on Skype. I'll hook up on Facebook. Okay, some people don't have Facebook. Some people don't have Skype. I'll download a new program that does video talk, chat. If it's a video program you have and I don't, I downloaded it. At one time, I didn't have Skype. Okay. But someone said, oh, I use Skype, I don't use Facebook Messenger. And I was like, okay, well, then I had to learn and figure out how to do Skype. And I had to learn a whole new program. I'll do that. Because I believe you're important, brothers and sisters in Christ. Okay? The brethren is important. Okay? But I want to leave you with this. I keep my eyes on Jesus Christ. And I'm trying to get you to keep your eyes. And when I take, and I always keep my eyes on Jesus Christ, when I take my eyes off Jesus Christ, everything seems to fall apart around here. I'm getting burnt out, Brother Jesus Christ, on the internet. I'm getting burnt out by the so-called online Christian life of some of the professing Christians out there. Uh, I always also said this before, so I'm getting burnt out on being a ministry of one. I want to be in a ministry with other men. I don't want to be the only one preaching. I'm not supposed to be the only one preaching. I want to be in ministry with other men that believe the King James Bible, that believe the major doctrines. Okay? The Godhead, not the, not the Trinity. Uh, Pre-time of Jacob's trouble, catch away the body of Christ, not post and mid-trib, dispensational teaching, eternal security in this dispensation, eternal security. But you have to have dispens you have to be dispensational. Believe in the true plan of salvation. King James Bible is God's perfect written word for today. And people say, well, what was God's word in the perfect word in the past? I what's important is what's God's perfect written word today? Okay. I'm getting burnt out because we're not doing things God's way. We're getting so lumped up and doing things the, the new world's way. I believe in the future, this is just a whole other talk some other time. I believe in the future, it's going to be, a lot of people are going to be isolated, like when it comes to the time of Jacob's trouble and the people that take the mark and worship the beast. I believe it's going to be isolation. They're going to be in their homes. They're going to own nothing, like, I, like Brother JT did in some of his articles on Wine Press. You're going to own nothing and be happy. But you're going to be sitting here, you're going to have Hollywood movies, TV shows, you're going to have video games, and you're going to have food delivered to you. It's all going to be, you're just stuck here. Okay? And that's the, that's the, that's what it's, it's going to. So then why are we trying to conform to that online, making it where there's just ministries online and that's it? We need to have physical ministries out there, brothers and sisters in Christ. But, like I said, that's just one of those things I'm getting burnt out, and it's just been bugging me lately, uh, my heart lately. I just want to be in ministry with other men in ministry. Okay? But there's men out there that so determined to be ministries of one. Ministries of one. There's nothing wrong with being a ministry of one. And I just, uh, like I said, just pray for the brethren as a whole in ministry. Brothers, that's one thing to walk away from this. You can walk away hating me. You shouldn't. True love for a brother in Christ is if you want to correct me on anything that I've said, you want to correct me, I have an email address. I'll link the email address. I got a P.O. box. I'll link that. Eventually, I'll get a new Skype set up, and I'll add that Skype link uh, to the About page. Um, so people, if you want to talk to me on Skype, I'll talk for a little bit. Okay. Um, but I want to leave you with this. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. Uh, uh, verse 2 verse 9, yeah. Chapter 2, verse 9. But as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. You know what keeps me going, brothers and sisters in Christ? Got all this garbage that's going on here, brethren like Brother JT stabbing me in the back, uh, Brother Brian, some other brethren, they're just stabbing me in the back one minute, you're a brother, go brother, and the next minute, just complete hate and disdain. They don't come talk to me. They don't try to gain their brother back. Uh, they don't try to correct me in love and meekness with authority. This is how you do it with authority. Uh, but you know what gets me through all this? 
even my own feelings. Let's go to this guy right here. Even my own mistakes and my own failings. You know what gets me through? This isn't forever. This life is not forever. There's nothing in this world that's worth preventing you from getting saved. And there's nothing in this world that's worth getting in the way of your walk with the Lord. Although sometimes things in this world do get in the way. Your flesh, worldliness, other people, trying to please other people instead of compromising. It gets in the way of your walk with the Lord. But no matter what we go through, this is not it. This isn't forever. When we get caught up in death, and then finally we all get resurrected, whether we get caught up in death and we get to come back down and get resurrected, remember the dead in Christ rise first, and then we which remain, those who are still alive, will be caught up with them. When we get caught up in death, or we get all caught up in life. Our eternity is up there, and God's got an amazing thing waiting for us up there. Okay? Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. In my Father's house, there are many mansions. Here I go, quoting another verse I've quoted before, and that she was throwing a fit about. I'm going to keep quoting the Bible. It helps me remember the Word of God, and it helps you, hopefully. But Jesus said, in my Father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. God hath prepared for them that love him. And we talked about this here. We quote another verse. True love for Jesus Christ is, If a man love me, he will keep my words. And my Father will love him and will come unto him and make our abode with him. There's no greater love than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Did you truly give your life to Jesus Christ at the cross? The old man, dead and buried. That's true love for Jesus Christ, keeping his word and sacrificing the old man at the cross. You sacrifice the man at the cross first, and then you keep his word. Or you keep his word because, like I said, you're obeying the gospel when you get saved. But you understand what I'm saying? That's what the Bible teaches, that love for him, to them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his capital S spirit. I got, was going through this for another study, so yes, I'll be mentioning this verse again. The Holy Spirit comes in and reveals the book and tells us how to live a life of Christ. And it tells us all the rewards, the blessings, that hope that someday we're going to be up there with Him. And He's got a place prepared for us. There's rewards that we'll get based off of how we live for Jesus Christ down here. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. And you keep going, for what man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit of man which is in him, even so the things of God knoweth no man but the capitalized spirit of God. Okay. This is our final authority, not this. I make mistakes, brother Jesus Christ. I try not to. I do. I make mistakes. But this is our final authority. That's the whole point of this. Words have meaning, God's word. Okay, context, words have meaning to promote reconciliation, the ministry of reconciliation. But in these last days, that's all, both of those uh, apply to this next one. But in these last days, my big push to you, brothers and sisters of Christ, is to keep your eyes on Jesus Christ with the life that you're living. Brethren are falling away. Brethren are becoming prideful. And I, I, I'm, I'm telling you, this guy, this is the guy where, like I always say, this is the guy I'm yelling at first. Before I'm talking to you, I've yelled at me first. Before I'm talking to you about it, I've talked to the Lord about it when it comes to me and my life. The pride, the ego, the envy, the bitterness, the backbiting, the whispering, the hate, the ain't being angry without a cause. I can go on and on. Worldliness comes in, the covetousness, which is idolatry. The whole point of this ministry is to keep your eyes on Jesus Christ, and this is the final authority. You have the capital S Holy Spirit in you. That Spirit, God's Spirit, is going to open this book to you and help you. The Holy Spirit in me is going to bear witness with the Holy Spirit in you, and you're going to be like, you know what, brother, you're right. I need to get that out of my life. Or, amen, brother, I'm doing this. Or, I can't believe you just came. I had that brother say that. I can't believe you just came out with this study because I was just dealing with that with the Lord, talking with the Lord about that. All right. 
This is the foundation, brother says Christ, the King James Bible for God's perfect written word in English. Okay? This is the foundation, not this. This can make mistakes. Sometimes I get to talking too fast and I might slip up and say something wrong. I remember Peter Ruckman, I don't want to keep calling, but Peter Ruckman talked about that where one time um, he had a testimony. I know I mentioned Peter Ruckman a lot because I'm listening to a lot of Peter Ruckman's old uh, audio cassettes that someone put online. And I got his videos here because I need to, I'm trying to buy more and I'm trying to, I want to do a booklet. And that's why they're here. They're not here because I'm trying to show them off. Because I know someone said, you're showing them off. They're here because I didn't want them here in my way when I'm doing Bible studies, but I put them to the side and I'm trying to do a booklet and then I don't want to print it out because I'm going to end up buying a few more. There's like at least another 20 or 30 videos that I can't afford them all at once, but I'm slowly getting them every month and I'm watching them at least once. And then, you know, if it's something I totally disagree with, then I'll throw it out. But if it's something that he has, for the most part, I believe is true, I'll keep it. But I want to make a booklet. All right? But that's why that's there. But brothers and sisters in Christ, um, this is the final authority. I'll go back to what I was saying. This is the final authority. Okay. Not Peter Ruckman, not me, not Brother Brian, not Brother JT, not Amanda, not the other guy, I forgot his name, the other guy. This is our final authority. And like I said, my door's open. You got a problem with me? Come talk to me. If you don't want to come talk to me, then don't be making videos against me. I mean, they're still going to, but I'm talking about for brethren who claim to be brothers in Christ. Don't be making videos like that if you can't come talk to me first. And definitely check yourself. Clown knows that you're trying to provoke a fight. You're using jesting that the Bible says is, is not profitable. You're doing things the world's way. Okay. Especially if you're doing that to a brother you once called a brother in Christ and said, I love you, brother. I'm here for you, brother. Brother, don't become like that. The frustration, I, just, I want to go on and on and on because I just want to rant. I don't really have brethren here to talk to. I have nobody to talk to here, but very few brethren to talk to online. And since I got kicked off Skype, <laughs> I'm, but I just don't become like that. If you truly, truly love your brothers and sisters in Christ, and you value true fellowship, you value your fellowship, you're going to do everything you can to save that fellowship. Okay, you got to stand for the truth. And if that person refuses to stand for the truth, it's not you break and losing the fellowship, it's that person. But are you doing everything you can? You're going to them with love and to, you know, to correct them. This is the final authority. So I've gone on too much, rambled, but I just want to end this with grace and peace. That's my, that's my goal for the body of Christ. Grace and peace. We're all of one mind, same judgment. But in the end, when we're of one mind and same judgment, that grace and peace abounds from God our Father. So grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And my love for you, my love for you, even Brother JT, you Brother Brian, these two people making the comment, my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. If you have a problem with me, come talk to me. I'm here. I'm here. I value fellowship. I value brethren. Truly saved brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm not, I don't want to be quick to just kick people to the curb. I don't want to be like that. And if I was like that at one point, I apologize. I don't want to be like that anymore. I want to be serious about, okay, are you, just because there's a disagreement, don't just be so quick to kick people to the curb. You can have brethren that turn their back on absolute truth. Try to go talk to them. Try to win them back to the Word of God. Like I said, if you have to remind them of who saved them, why they got saved, and who it is they serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Remember that verse <laughs> in Joshua? Choose this day whom ye may serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So... Thank you for li listening to me rant a little bit. I apologize. There hasn't been a lot of videos out, getting work done, struggling with some things. Um, but Brother and Sister Christ, I just, I do love my Brother and Sister Christ. I don't want division. I don't. I just, this is always going to cause division. The internet life, internet Christian life. We need to come together as one, and we need to stand by this book. 
Okay, and I think house churches is the biggest solution. It's not an easy solution. It's not a, something that's going to happen overnight. I just I believe it is the solution, but a lot of people aren't going to go for it. Um, so I will try to get some of these other studies that I've been putting together. I've got people that put questions on the question and answer. If you have any questions and answers, by all means, put them on the question and answer video so I can put together some studies. And just pray for me, Brother Christ. All I can ask is really pray for me. The power of prayer. Do not underestimate the power of prayer. Never underestimate the power of prayer. Sorry for rambling so long. Please forgive me. And I will see you in the next video.